One of your three key questions is, does management love what they do or does management love the money? So, how do you see the crisis having changed integrity of management? Well, I think what led to the crisis involved, to some extent, a lack of integrity in many a management. Fortunately, some of them are now gone. So, yeah, integrity is very important. It's the safest way to make money also. There's an occasional perfect knave who succeeds pretty well with money, but that kind of success reminds me of what Pope Urban said about Cardinal Richelieu. He said, if there is a God, Cardinal Richelieu has much to answer for. But if there is no God, he's done rather well. <laughs> and too many people want to be like Cardinal, Pope Urban's view of Cardinal Richelieu. And, and uh, the integrity is important. It's terribly important. And of course, everybody mouths the integrity even when it's lacking. So it's, it's, it's difficult to, to uh, be sure that, that professing integrity is, not, is the same as having it. The everyone else is doing it is, 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 is the toughest thing. I, I think Yeah. You, you had this classic example in about 1993, roughly. You know, the Accounting Standards Board came out and says what was obvious to everybody all along was that stock options were actually expense and that expenses, for some reason or another, belonged on the income statement. And America corporate America fought back like you cannot believe. I mean, it was like World War III had broken out in terms of armies of CEOs marching on Washington. So the Accounting Standards Board backed off. Uh, Congress, uh, Senate voted 88 to 9 to tell them that, uh, you know, what the hell did the Accounting Standards Board know about accounting? And the, the Senate would tell them what accounting was all about. Uh, when the Accounting Standards Board backed off, they said, there, we'll now say that you can do it one of two ways. Number one is preferred, which was to expense. Number two was acceptable, but, but not preferred. Of the Standard & Poor's 500 companies, 498 chose number two, the, uh, the non-preferred way. Two took the preferred method. And I talked to one, a number of people in that 498 that I would trust to be a trustee of my will. You know, I'd love to have them as a next door neighbor. They could marry my daughter. But in the end, they said, I can't do it if the other guy isn't doing it. It was a variation on I'm doing it because the other guy is doing it. They, just, they, they basically said, I'll be penalizing my shareholders if I report less in the way of earnings than I can report. And the, all the other guys are doing it that way, and I understand your point. And the situational ethics problem is huge. You know, it uh, I gave you earlier that illustration of how rare it is to find, if you carry it out to tenths of a cent, a four in reported earnings quarterly. That's not accidental. And it's, but if you talk to the people that play games to get that four up to five, they would say, well, everybody else is doing it. Your own statistics prove that. And that is a, you know, it is a tough problem to deal with. We try to create as few situations in Berkshire as we can that would induce such behavior. You know, I don't have the managers submit budgets to me. There is no Berkshire budget. You know, they can use them in their own operations. Some do and some don't. Many do. A great many do. But if they submit them to me, you know, and the temptation becomes, if they're not quite making it and they think I'm looking at that all the time, the temptation becomes to, to fudge in some way. And very few would do it. But the more that thought the other ones were doing it, the more that would do it. it it's just human behavior. And you want to kind of create a structure that minimizes the weaknesses in human behavior. And, I think Berkshire's about as good a place at that as any, although I'm sure we're not perfect at it. Charlie? 
Yeah, what's really interesting on this issue is that so much of the bad behavior does, does not come from malevolence or overweening greed or anything like that. It comes from subconscious poor cognition that justifies a lot of behavior that's really not justifiable if it's better understood. And that happens to practically everybody. And the cure is very difficult. The best cure is to have a system where the people who are making the decisions bear the consequences. And that's why the system that Wall Street created where nobody really owned the mortgages, they just passed them rapidly to somebody else at a profit. And so nobody felt any responsibility that the mortgages be any good. Systems like that at a basic level are irresponsible systems. And it's deeply immoral to create irresponsible systems like that. But the people who create them don't realize they're being immoral. They think those systems are wonderful. Uh, who do you see apologizing for the behavior you now find so regrettable in our recent mess? There are very few apologies you'll note. People think they did fine.